pull down in preparation for the spoil placement timing. This is the first in a two-part movie that takes you through the various spoil commands. Initially we'll start by creating the spoil polylines. I have several examples in the drawing already. There's three main ways to do it. You can simply pick a polyline and assign a name. You can choose spoil by interior point. It'll draw a new polyline just like boundary polyline would and give it a spoil name. Or you could do spoil layout by width. Spoil layout by width simply needs an open polyline representing the boundary like that and then a baseline that it will offset based on our dimensions. So I'll run spoil layout by width. I'll generate the width to be 200 wide. The layer will be called spoils new. And we'll just call it uh, site 2. And the first spoil name we'll just call it spoil 100. Select the baseline polyline. We'll grab this one. And then the spoil polyline itself. And there it broke it up into 200 wide spoil piles. This would be for an out of pit spoil. Here's an example of additional spoil polylines. I have a 3D pit shell with pits named X10, X11, X12. And then we're going to fill that in. And so I generated my spoil polylines to the final pit dimensions. There's in pit spoil 1, there's in pit spoil 2, 3, etc. And then over here I have some out of pit spoil piles laid out with the command you just saw, spoil layout by width. Okay, back to the spoil pull down. We can run label spoil names. We'll go ahead and give these an, a label. We called it site 2 spoil. Text height is 50. We'll just do the align method. Grab the spoil polylines, and there it labels them up, showing you the new names. They would also need to have a direction. Before I do the direction, I'm going to show merge spoil and get rid of this 106 and merge it into 105. Merge spoil. Pick inside the first big one you want to keep, and then pick inside the small one you want to get rid of, and then just delete the text. So now that whole thing is called spoil 105, and there's its boundary line. So now we're ready to assign directions, and just like in the boundary menu pull down, we have the pit directions and all the pit commands. We have a parallel pull down now with spoil, and so I'll run spoil directions, assign directions to the whole thing. Now you could have a bench by bench specific direction, and for this one, let's just do an azimuth. Grab the spoil lines and enter in the azimuth of 90. So 90 azimuth is all going to the right, directly to the east. Other options to display, reverse, and clear directions are in the same place. And now to assign the spoil quantities under spoil, we have calculate spoil volume. The first two required surfaces are the top fill surface and the bottom fill surface. The top fill surface is what you're going to fill the pile or piles up to, and the bottom fill surface is what you're actually stacking them on. So in this case, it's going to be out of pit spoil, and so we're going to stack them onto the existing surface topography. And then the top fill surface, I will choose the highest elevation grid I have, which is going to be elevation 4850. And then you can break that up into two different benches. And so we're going to run this two times for the two benches. We'll do two lifts of spoil dumping. First one is bench one, is the upper bench. And so that will be from 4850 down to elevation 4800. Hit OK, and select the spoil polylines to assign that to. And we'll take a look at the volume calculation, display everything. And there we have the spoil, the site, the bench number one, and the volume. We'll exit out and run the command one more time for bench two. The required services do not change, 
However, my top and bottom of that bench will change. So now I'm going to define bench 2, which is lower. So the top of bench 2 is now going to be the 4800. And the bottom surface will go down all the way to the existing ground surface, and I'll choose the surface topo original. Select those polylines again, and check out the quantities. So there's bench 2 and its material quantities. All right, exit there. Now we'll go ahead and run the edit spoil volume command just to confirm and look at the spoil quantities. Select all the spoil polylines. There's the site, the pile names, and the individual benches one and two. And in this volume column, here we have the individual volume spoil by spoil and bench by bench. So this tells you what these pile boundaries can hold based on their 3D surfaces that we designed to. And so the 3D surfaces can be comprised of any design to represent benches, 3D high wall, slope angles, angle of repose angles, whatever your design is, that will be your design surface. So now this concludes the setup for the spoil commands. The next movie Part 2 will show you the spoil placement.